Joyful blessings. This is Kaylin Castell. I am the co-founder of the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School and the creator of the Celestial Timings Easing. My YouTube this month is focusing on the completion of the eclipse window that began with the total lunar eclipse at the December solstice and is completing with the partial solar eclipse on January 4th, 2011. I hope you find this information useful and informative and thank you so much for watching. The eclipse window we are exploring began with the December 21st, 2010 total lunar eclipse and that happened just hours before the December solstice and it ends with the January 4th, 2011 partial solar eclipse. And one of the things that makes this particular eclipse window unique is that the December total lunar eclipse happened just hours before the December solstice and uh, when Jeff Chester of the U.S. Naval Observatory inspected a list of eclipses going back 2,000 years for NASA, what he found was that there was only one other lunar eclipse that happened on December 21st, and that was in 1638. Uh, now, in 2011, the, there will be four partial solar eclipses and two total lunar eclipses, and this can only happen six times in the 21st century. Of course, 2011, it's happening, and then it won't happen again until 2029. Eclipses accelerate change and operate outside the normal rhythm and flow of time. And when we are between eclipses, it can feel like an in-between time or an eclipse cauldron of transformational change. Many people can feel disoriented in an eclipse window as the changes accelerate. Also, the moon will partially cover the sun and make direct contact with the source of light for the earth and the moon. This will be visible over most of Europe, North Africa, and Central Asia. The eclipse will begin around 10.40 p.m. and won't be visible in the Western time zones. Western Europe, um, in places like Madrid, Paris, London, and Copenhagen, will see the partial eclipse at sunrise. Uh, the maximum eclipse is going to be visible in northern Sweden. And also Cairo, Jerusalem, Istanbul, and Tehran will see most of this partial eclipse. Uh, the sunset um, Eclipse will be visible from central Russia, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, and northwest China. Uh, now, what is also unique about this particular partial solar eclipse is that it's happening on the day when the Earth is at perihelion. That means that the Earth is making its closest approach to the Sun in its annual cycle, and this will further magnify the intensity of this partial solar eclipse. Now here is a view of the eclipse, a, a slide showing you where the sun and the moon are located in the sky, just past the galactic cross near galactic center. And the green line is representing the p path the planets follow, or the ecliptic. It's also the plane of the solar system. The blue line represents the galactic equator, or the plane of the galaxy, and where the two cross represents the galactic cross. And this is where the sun is located at the December solstice. Now you see the sun and the moon are just past the galactic cross. And around 11.30 p.m., you can see that this is another view of where they are and that the moon depicted much bigger than the sun in this particular uh, viewing of it and so not exactly um, to scale. But the, you can see the moon is beginning to touch the sun in this particular slide. Now, the exact new moon eclipse center point is at 1.03 a.m. Pacific time on January 4th. So, of course, not visible again in the western time zones. But you can see that the sun and the moon are in a direct line above a fixed star called Nunki. This is an important star in the constellation of the Archer. And it is on the arrow of the archer pointing toward galactic center. Now, in this slide, you can see that the um, nunki marks the vein of the arrow, and it is drawn fully back on the bow, and the archer is ready to release this arrow into galactic center. 
So what we could say is that this, this eclipse is occurring on the nexus or convergence point that just so happens to be pointed at galactic center where the energies of the December solstice are most concentrated. The archer is ready to release this, and so this eclipse then represents an alchemical concentration of energies aligned with humanity's destiny that's being released to galactic center and transformed and then resent out. So what is um, possible for people who are not able to see the eclipse is that you can see um, Venus and Mercury in the east just before sunrise on January 4th. And the last thing I'd like to leave you with are these uh, uh, tables that are showing when the moon will return to 29 degrees Gemini, the December solstice um, eclipse, total lunar eclipse point, and when the moon is returning to 14 Capricorn, the um, solar eclipse point. And when the moon crosses these points once each month, it will act as a trigger to further what has been set in motion in this eclipse window. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this YouTube and there's more great information on my website, celestialtimings.com and also on the Shamanic Astrology website, shamanicastrology.com. This is Kaylin Castell and I'll see you next month.